ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Good evening. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on May 6th, 2024. I'm Select Board Chair Steve DeCourcy. Tonight's meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format consistent with provisions in state law for remote participation in public meetings. Before we begin, please note the following. This meeting is being conducted in the Select Board Chambers and over Zoom. It is being recorded and simultaneously broadcasted on ACMI. People wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. People participating either in person or by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, we ask you to provide your full name and place of residence in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials found on the town's website, specifically the Select Board Agendas and Minutes page. If technical difficulties sever the remote connection to one or more par participants and efforts to reconnect within a reasonable period of time fail, the in-person meeting will continue at the discretion of the chair, provided that a quorum of the board is physically present. Zoom participants are encouraged to retain the phone number provided in their confirmation email for a backup audio connection to the meeting. There, there will be an opportunity for public comment during our discussion of Article 4 this evening. If you are attending by Zoom and want to participate, please raise your hand when I announce that public comment is open. Um, we have six items on the agenda tonight. Let's see how much of the town's business we can get done. And I will start with items two and three from the consent agenda. Item two is the minutes of the meeting of April 8th, 2024. Item three is a request for a special one day beer and wine license on June 19th at the Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event uh, by the Arlington Garden Club. Move approval. Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, we have a motion for approval by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Helmuth. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, it is a unanimous vote. Now, we are going to go out of order on the remaining articles. I'm going to do Article 4 last this evening. So I'm going to move on to Item 5 on the agenda, the Fossil Fuel-Free Bylaw Waiver Guidance. Um, and Talia Fox, our Sustainability Manager, is here along with our Building Inspector, uh, Mr. Champa. Good evening. Um, it's pretty straightforward, though. We're back again. Um, good evening, Sustainability Manager, Tally Fox. Um, thanks for your time. I'm here to discuss uh, updates to the proposed guidelines for the prescription of waivers under the fossil fuel-free bylaw. Um, I was here on April 8th to discuss these guidelines, and uh, the goal, similar to that conversation of our conversation today, is to determine what, if any, changes to make to the proposed guidelines, which uh, we've updated prior to the select board's adoption of those guidelines. Um, so as a reminder, uh, if you could go to the next slide. Thanks. As a reminder, the fossil fuel free bylaw takes effect on May 21st of this year. And the bylaw specifies that the select board is to provide guidance regarding the granting of waivers prior to that effective date. The bylaw specifies that waivers can be granted where compliance with the bylaw renders a project financially infeasible or impractical to implement. Next slide, please. The previous draft of the guidelines was presented to the select board on April 8th. The draft uh, required applicants to provide a narrative describing the factors that make the project commercially unviable due to additional cost or delays associated with the fossil fuel free equipment or electrical service upgrades required to comply with the bylaw. At the April 8th meeting, the select board recommended clarifying the definition of commercially unviable. And the board specifically suggested referencing the comprehensive permitting or similar processes for guidance. Next slide, please. So the team being the building, uh, the director of inspectional services and the town manager uh, had a discussion regarding refining the guidance and we settled on the term substantial financial hardship as a basis for granting a waiver rather than commercially unviable. The guidelines clarify that costs or delays associated with the project are exceptional, exceeding typical costs and delays of similar projects. So that's how 
uh, the director of inspectional services will to determine whether uh, it's a situation of substantial financial hardship. Um, during our discussions about how to refine the guidelines, the town manager and director of inspectional services have suggested basing uh, the guidance off of the protocols for granting a zoning variance, which uses uh, the same substantial hardship language. Um, and the director of inspectional services is here today if the board has further questions about how um, decisions regarding the waivers might be made in accordance with the updated guidance. And that is all I have. Thank you for your time. Happy to answer any questions. Great. Th th thank you, Ms. Fox. And uh, apologies, Mr. Champer. I said building inspector, director of inspectional no, no, services. No, no. I want to make sure I, I, I get that correct. I, I no slight. <laughs> That's all right. I changed Christine Bernjournal's last name. Uh, <laughs> so you, we appreciate the update since you were here on, on April 8th and, and identifying the areas that we had. So I, I will turn. Uh, areas of concern or question. Uh, turn to members of the board for any questions or comments. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for coming back. I think, as I recall, I may have had a lot to do with you coming back uh, with the request for clarification. So I really appreciate the thought and the care you put into it. And I, I'm really happy with what I see. I think it strikes a balance uh, between being more specific but not too specific, you know, in, in the uh, uh, recognition that it's a pilot program and that we need to really figure out how to apply that. So um, I'm, uh, I'm really grateful that you came back with this. I think it was worth, worth the effort. Okay, thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Any other comments? Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, Mr. Helmuth, for bringing them back. <laughs> um, but he, he did make a very good point. I have two questions. Um, in terms of the process for uh, waivers is that something you mr Champer, will handle yourself is it something that you and others in um your department can handle or somebody someone else besides you i, I mean i would handle it but in you know uh collaboration with other inspectors particularly the wiring inspector where um they you know hardships would sometimes be based on um service upgrades, upgrades to power lines, transformer upgrades that you know, may be necessary in order to power a particular home. Okay, and then just, and I, I thank you Ms. Fox for the, and others for the clarification on um, what the financial hardship would be, and I know the chair also um, um, had, had some thoughts on that. Um, I just have a hypothetical in terms of and I know it's difficult in the, in the construction business. One of my first jobs was glazing granite Suffolk construction at all, at all, at all. <laughs> um, and back then there were different kinds of uh, guidelines <clears throat> in terms of a waiver process back then. And there was just a very small minority, of usually subcontractors, that um, intentionally or not set the project up for uh, an issue by purposely uh, choosing a manufacturer or a sub subcontractor that they knew hmm. wouldn't probably be able to provide either the hardware or the craft service needed as a sub subcontractor. So, my question and my hypothetical is: is when you're going through the um, financial hardship when it comes to a delay, mm -hmm. is is there something in place that can sort of safeguard? Like, can, can you look at the proposal and say, listen, everyone knows that space out of Switzerland, they never get anything out. They're trying to say, you know, I need this waiver because I can't get this in time when this company of craft never was going to come through. Or is that just too much fine detail for no, us I mean, to expect? Yeah, we'll definitely be um, reviewing the, uh, more the ability to procure equipment rather than you know, their, the specific delay that they may be having um, with the equipment that they've chosen, um, it, it'll, it'll need to be, uh, it, it'll need to be, a, you know, a more specific to the, um, more specific to the industry. It can't just be that they chose this specific equipment uh, and they're not able to get it for eight months. So, you know, they want a waiver and they want to be able to use fossil fuels. It, it, um, it has to be, you know, it would be more, uh, when talking about equipment, we would, it would be more delay probably caused by Eversource in the ability to upgrade the power lines um, so that the four, you know, it, be it a 400 amp service could be uh, properly 
brought in from the street um, versus it, so it's it, we, we have to look at the needs versus wants mm -hmm. um, and it, 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 we, I, I at least wouldn't feel that it would be, um, that it would, that it would be, you know, something that could be a waiver applied for because they chose equipment that would not be available. And then it probably goes without saying that in terms of um, if something should happen and something was substandard or not done correctly, the town doesn't have any culpability in terms of if there's somehow a legal claim. I'm, I'm right in the middle of the, the gas yeah. explosion yeah. depositions up in Lawrence and okay. everything there. But so um, if the town were to grant a waiver and something went awry, that still remains with in terms of legal liability with the uh, general contractor and others. It doesn't fetter back to the town because we gave a waiver. No, I mean, the town would only be giving a waiver from the fossil fuel free regulation. It wouldn't be giving any waiver from meeting um, state regulations for installations. Okay, thank you. Thank, sure. you. thank you, Mrs. Mon. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Helleth. Just a quick follow-up question. Um, can you, I don't want to add more work to your plate. Lord knows you have enough. But uh, from the record keeping that you'll be doing when you make a waiver decision, I think I'd like to make sure that we learn from that because it is a pilot. and and have a way, can you imagine a way that you, again, with the existing workers that you have, that you could report to this body, um, you know, in a year or so, uh, what those look like, how many there have been, yeah, what, absolutely. What, what the great extra costs were and all that? Yeah, we, we, we can definitely track it, and we, we had planned to um, anyways, because it, because it is such a new thing, and even with um, a lot of electric homes already having been built, most were duplexes, and there haven't been many situations where, um, where there's been the requirement for a 400 amp service. And so we're not as familiar with, with you know, um, a lot of the, the challenges that there may be because we just got over the challenges from COVID as far as um, procurement of supplies and et cetera. So, um, cool. Thank you. Great. Thank, you, thank, thank you, Mr. Helms. Mr. Diggins. Well, since Mr. Helms took us there, you know, I'm going to ask. Now, this pilot is going to be for 10 communities, right? I imagine there's going to be a report out on the entire pilot, right? And so we'll probably be able to see that report so we have the, a bigger set of, of events, for lack of a better word, from which we can learn, right? If I may, the, um, we are required to report um, every, every summer all the data on permits that have been granted under the program um, from the past year. So I'm not, I'm not sure yet exactly how that will work. I mean, we've generated some reports in OpenGov in anticipation mm -hmm. of the, the data reporting requirements, but we haven't gotten guidance specifically from DOER about the format of that um, or, or any other sort of summary reports that they may be doing, although I anticipate we'll, we will see that because they'll want to report back on the the overall successes or challenges of the pilot. So we can certainly report back on those. To Look the forward to more reading material. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we also have added uh, the fossil fuel free pilot and the specialized stretch code into OpenGov. Um, so everything will be tracked through OpenGov as well. Right. Um, we've had, yes, and we've, we also had a recent meeting to finalize the form, the waiver form, and there's a, there's a certificate involved. <laughs> and so we'll, yeah, we'll have ways of keeping track. Um, through OpenGov. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Diggins. And I just want to elaborate on a point uh, following Mr. Helmuth's question of you, Ms. Fox, in terms of, so the um, Title VI, Article 10, Section E2, deals with waivers and the guidance to be provided by the select board. And, and I just want to point out one of the things that it also says in the bylaw is that that guidance will be periodically extended or amended in the light of experience and changing circumstances. So we encourage both of you come back to us if you're seeing things out in the field that um, you feel that should be changed or updated uh, in the guidance. So uh, because the guidance is coming from the select board, we've received a lot of comments. Actually, we'll be looking for a motion if uh, anybody is so inclined to adopt the, uh, the guidance. Okay, thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, okay, so a motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mr. Diggins. Uh, anything further that you wanted to add? Or I don't think so. Okay. Thank you. All right. Great. Any further comment? All right. So on a motion by Mr. Elmer, seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor say aye. Aye. aye.
Great. Unanimous. Thank you very much for coming back. Thank, Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do next is the item six is the discussion and approval draft select board report to special town meeting. We haven't had our hearing on Article 4, um, and for reasons that will become apparent in a moment, we're going to return to that at the end of the meeting, but I would like um, to discuss the report, the draft report, as it pertains to Articles 2 and 5, and to turn to Attorney Cunningham, um, I think you already had sent us comments on Article 2, and now we have the comments on Article 5. That's, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, that's correct. And I just appreciate the tight timeline that the board is under to get this report to special town meeting before Wednesday. So a, a draft, the bones of a, a report have been prepared uh, for the board members for tonight. Obviously, the discussion and debate on Article 4 uh, is pending, so that can be inserted tonight, hopefully, um, and get if it's approved by the board or however, whatever action the board chooses to take, a finalized report could be then uh, provided, uh, hopefully, to members of special town meeting tomorrow. Um, so they could have that available to them. Great. Thank, thank you, Attorney Cunningham. So you have Articles 2 and 5 in the introduction here in front of you, so I'll turn to board members for comments or motions. Mrs. Mahoney. Uh, first, I'll move approval. Okay. Mr. Diggins? I'll, I'll second. I do have some comments. No, go, go right ahead. About five I means. So this is not a hill that I'm going to even scrape my knee on. Okay, the, the comments on five are fine. If, if I were to change them, you know, I would do in this order of preference just the first paragraph. You know, that would be my first preference. My second par preference would be the first paragraph and the second, the third paragraph. Mean, and then my third preference is keep the second paragraph. So if anyone's inclined you need to agree with that, I'm, I'm, I'm for it. But, but as I said, I mean, it's fine as it is. Okay. Thank, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Any other comments? From... I, I, like uh, Mr. I, I like it as is. Okay. Okay. I think it's fine as it is. It's good. Okay. Okay. All right. So was that, that was more of a comment, not a motion, right? Right, because okay. I, I, I second the motion. Okay, so, great. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. So any other comments or, or uh, on Articles 2 and 5? Okay. So with that, um, on a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins for approval of the report so far as it goes on 2-5 in the introduction. All in favor say aye. 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 Great. Okay, thank you. Um, now we will move back to Article 4. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Hurd. I need to recuse myself from Article 4 is in my law practice. I represent one of the parties involved in the transaction. Okay, thank you. I get one for Mr. Hurd. Okay, so Article 4, uh, Article for Review in the Special Town Meeting is a disposition of real estate on Acton Street. Um, we have a prelim preliminary draft vote and comment from Attorney Cunningham. Um, before I turn it over, did, did, Attorney Cunningham, did you want to um, start the discussion or? Thank you, Mr. Chair. No, I think it'd be most appropriate for Ms. Suarez to, uh, dis to initiate the discussion about this particular article. Okay, great. As far as, th thank you for coming in this evening. Thank you for having me. I'm Sarah Suarez, I'm the Assistant Director of Planning and Community Development, and I'm here tonight to discuss a parcel of town-owned land located behind the St. Athanasius Church along Acton Street and Appleton Place, <clears throat> which you can see on the screen there. Um, this land also faces the Audison Middle School, which is at the bottom of the screen. In 1963, the town extended Acton Street to connect to Appleton Street through the now Audison School property. This road extension resulted in an orphaned strip of land um, on the opposite side of the road from the school. This land is adjacent to the St. Athanasius Church property and extends the entire length of Acton Street. In 1970, the church requested permission to pass over the town's land to access its parking lot in the rear of the property. The town engineer investigated and made two recommendations to the select board. 
One would be the entire strip of land be sold to the church via a warrant article at the 1971 town meeting, or access be granted to the church to alter and use the strip of land as requested. While no warrant articles have been discovered related to this, it would appear the town chose to grant access for the church to cross over the land to access its parking lot. There have been subsequent discussions about the town's land since 1970, and there is a renewed interest at this time because the church is in the process of selling its rear parcel along Acton Street and Appleton Place, which is bordered by the town's land. Um, so as you can see, there's a line that cuts kind of across the middle of the screen there above the triangle, and the portion to the bottom of the screen um, would be the portion of land that is being sold. And actually, if you want to go to the next slide, it's a little easier <laughs> described. Um, the, during discussions between the town manager, town council, and staff, it was determined that now would be a most appropriate time to proceed with the disposition of land. Um, on its own, the town land is just over 5,000 square feet and comprised of a triangular shaped portion at the northwesterly quarter of Acton Street and a long narrow strip running along the length of Acton Street southeasterly to Appleton Place. Due to the unusual shape and limited square footage, this is an unbuildable lot on its own. There are no utilities on site, no conservation restrictions, and there is limited financial value of the property as it is. However, it could be considered more valuable considering the adjacent land is now for sale. I will now turn it over to town council to answer any legal questions and the next steps for the disposition of land for your consideration. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Ms. Suarez. Uh, Attorney Cunningham, would you like to add anything? Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Ms. Suarez. I just want to thank uh, Deputy Town Council Munson and Peter Buckley from the legal department's office for all their work on this. Uh, this is the first step in the process for the potential disposition of this property. The select board takes its initial step. It would then go to special town meeting for a vote upon and weigh in. Because it's school, uh, it's property that's under the care, custody, and control of the school department, uh, this would need to go to the school committee. Uh, they would need to declare it surplus uh, if they did so after town meeting. And then it would come back to this board for potential uh, restrictions on disposition uh, in working with the town manager's office. But that's that's the basic process. This is like this is just the first step, um, but it was it's a, it's a it was a difficult property to do the historical research on and figure out where it came from and what was happening. But fortunately, through the hard work of uh, community and planning and development as well, uh, it was really we were able to come to a conclusion about what exactly what parcel we're talking about. Great. Thank thank you, Attorney Cunningham. Again, just for clarification, we had that earlier diagram, and here we're looking at. The, the, the parking lot that's used by, I believe that the Audison uses it, but it's the church parking lot that they've granted use. And years ago, there used to be like a, a pole up that, that, that designated like the separation between what was being used for school purposes and, and what was being used for the church. Is that okay? Uh, Attorney Cunningham? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just in, in follow up to that, this, this property is subject to the public bidding provisions of, rule, of, of Chapter 30B. So therefore, um, if authorization is provided and all the, all the steps that I've outlined are taken, there's no obligation uh, on the part of the town to sell this property. It would essentially be out to the highest bidder. Okay, thank you. And, and I will note, as, as I looked at this and received, appreciate all the research that, that that was done, this parcel in the church was acquired originally, I think, in 1913. And when, when the present church acquired the land, there was no update to the plan. So I think that's what made you challenge, it made so challenging to determine what was there. So, so um, thank you for your additional research. Any comments or um, motions or questions from the board? This is a public hearing, so I'll, I'll start with initial questions, see if any member of the public would like to be heard. No one, okay. Um, there is nobody in the chambers that wishes to ask questions. Is there anybody on Zoom? Seeing no hands raised, Mr. Okay, all right, so I will return to the board. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. I'd like to move favorable action. A motion for favorable action. Mr. Diggins? I second that, Mr. Chair. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. We have a motion for favorable action by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, great. So that, that at least this phase is done. 
there was language in there, and again, um, Attorney Cunningham and Attorney Munson have written up draft comments, um, assuming that the vote went through. Um, maybe we could have a motion um, to approve this subject to further review based on what went on this evening, just because of the time frame in submitting our report to town meeting. We're not going to be coming back to have a final vote on it. So, okay, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. We have a second. Mr. Diggins. Okay. Any, any, I'd like to note that our attorney Cunningham is remarkably prescient in his anticipation of the <laughs> sense of the board <laughs> this evening. Well done, sir. It's got a good handle on what the board might do this evening. Uh, okay. So on a, a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins regarding the comments. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. So that is a unanimous vote. And I believe that uh, disposes of Article 4. Thank you very much, Ms. Rose. Thank you. That moves us on to um, new business. No new business, huh? thank you. Attorney Cunningham? No new business, thank you. Mr. Feeney? No new business, thank you. Mr. Diggins? No new business. Mrs. Mahan? No, thank you. Mr. Helmuth? Nothing for me. Okay, and nothing for me either. So we'll take a motion to adjourn. Mr. Diggins. Motion to adjourn. A second. And second by Mr. Helmuth. So a motion to adjourn by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mr. Helmuth. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, meeting's concluded. Thank you. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com ACMI to learn how you can help.